Today we're going to be doing a big old brake upgrade installing the Lexus GX460 calipers and rotors on my 06 Tundra. Coming up. I'm Drew and this is Evergreen Overland. On this channel we do reviews on camping and overland gear, we hone our outdoor cooking skills and techniques, and we showcase 4x4 and off-road vehicle modifications like the one we're going to talk about today. Before I go any further, I want to put this out there as a public service announcement. This video is intended for strictly entertainment purposes. I'm doing this just to show you the process that I went through and the decisions I made to do this upgrade. Please do the research and make the judgment call for yourself if this type of a job is within your capabilities. You're dealing with the braking system of your vehicle that's a life or death situation if that thing fails so make sure you're comfortable if you move forward and do any of this for yourself from the onset of getting this truck I noticed that I had some brake shut the guy I bought this truck from said he had recently gotten the brakes all serviced and all that kind of stuff but I knew that something probably wasn't right and the rotors were probably warped on it. It just wasn't doing it terribly at the time, so it wasn't that big of a high priority on my list. Two and a half years later, the truck's a lot heavier. It's got a lot more components bolted onto it. It's sitting up higher. There's just a lot more stuff going on with it that are making it a more dynamic ride. And the brake shutter has definitely gotten worse over time. Along with just getting rid of the brake shutter, I definitely feel a little bit of a sponginess to the brake system for sure. And being that I'm so much heavier than I was at a stock position, I wanted to really increase the quality and the stopping power of my braking system. Hopefully that's what I get out of this using a couple different upgraded components today. So the kit that I put together here is a modification that people do taking the 2010 Plus, I'm not sure where the cap on that is, but that year model, 2010 Lexus GX460 calipers and rotors. These rotors are a beast. The rotors in the Tundra and the first gen Sequoias, standard, at least the double cab models, are a 13 inch, I want to say, a 13 WL. And these are a 14 WA from the Lexus GX460. I also decided to go with the drilled and slotted rotor as well, just because it seems to be what everybody's doing. I know it supposedly helps dissipate heat more evenly, which is really important. Um, but, you know, there's people all over the internet who say it's not necessary, it is necessary, get it, don't, whatever. I chose to get it. These are about a half an inch thicker in the rotor than your standard OEM Tundra rotors were. They are an inch wider. So you have to have a 17 inch rim. You can't fit these on a 16 inch rim. That's important to note. And they're just a bigger and beefier rotor. Now I'm also using the Lexus GX460 brake calipers right here. These calipers always also give you 0.2 of an inch bigger pistons. Um, I bought all the brake calipers, rotors, all that kind of stuff from a company called R1 Concepts. I would say sign up for their email list. They typically have 25-30% off flash sales all the time. So I bought the calipers and I sent them directly to uh, my buddy and his machine shop that he recommends. And what they do is this right here. These little wings right here where that shiny line is, those need to be machined down 5 30 seconds. There's people online that do it with the grinder, and honestly, I don't recommend doing it yourself. I definitely recommend sending it to a really good machine shop and having them do the work for you just so that it's a perfectly flat machine surface that you're working with. That basically gets it so that there's no interference between the rotors and the calipers in the position that it bolts up onto the Tundra. That's the only modification that I'm aware of that you need to make so that this will fit in your factory bolt locations. I'm really optimistic that this is gonna be a huge upgrade in the quality of the braking that I have. I am also gonna be installing some flexible braided brake lines in the system from the hard mount where it goes into the calipers. Your OEM brake lines over the years are gonna eventually start to swell and it's start, gonna start to swell and give a little bit of give in the system, which you don't want with brakes because it's using hydraulic pressure to clamp your brakes down and that can definitely affect your pedal feel. I might split these up into multiple videos because this is a lot to talk about. But the third thing I'm going to do today is learn how to use a pressurized brake bleeder kit. This is basically going to hook up to your air compressor using whichever fitting you use. It comes with a couple different ones. This is going to get filled with new brake fluid and get put in the reservoir underneath the hood so that you're never running the system dry. Utilizing the air from your compressor, it will basically pull your old fluid through the system, keeping the top reservoir full so it doesn't run out of air and pump air bubbles into your system and hopefully make it really easy to bleed the brakes on my own. I got a lot to do today, so let's get into it and see how long this job is gonna take.
All right, these things are pretty old and rusted. There's no doubt in my mind these are the original rotors. This is the original uh, soft brake line. So just take these cotter pins off. I'm gonna go ahead and go through, just spray some of these bolts with a little bit of penetrating fluid. There we go. There's one. I'm gonna go ahead and get this caliper off and then figure out how to get the rotor off itself. But I've got these little brake line plugs. I've never used these before, but uh, we're gonna give them a shot. So these have a fat side and a skinny side. And uh, one side is meant for the banjo bolt fitting down on the brake caliper itself. And then the other side is meant for just your regular thread style fitting. So, hey, directions in Spanish. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off using a crow's foot, or I think it's called so called a flange head wrench. This just gives you the capability to pass through your brake line right there, but also wrap around all the connection points of that fitting just so you have a really good grip on it. Now I sprayed this down a little bit with PB Blast. I'm gonna make sure I'm supporting the weight a little bit. I really don't wanna strip this out. So. And what you don't want to do is strip off your f thing like that. This is a shitty flange head wrench and I would recommend getting a nice quality one. I'm going to try a couple of them using just a standard and I really hope it doesn't bite me in the ass. Put that down there. I'm just going to plug this hole. So you just want to wipe down wherever you got any of that fluid on anything. It's super caustic. All right, well, I've come this far. I am actually going to just finish up this whole side before I move on to the next side. So I am gonna replace the standard OEM brake lines with the new steel braided brake lines. Uh, this is a banjo bolt conversion. And what a banjo bolt is, is it's basically just a, a bolt with a hole in the bottom and on the sides to allow fluid to pass through it. And you have a crush washer on either side of the bolt. So the bolt go, crush washer goes on to the head side of the bolt. Then you put your open banjo bolt style fitting right there. Put your crush washer on the other side of the bolt. And then that just gets fed right into the inlet of your brake caliber for the, the fluid. Now you'll do all this once it's on the vehicle. Let's get under the truck, take a look at removing the rest of the brake line and installing this bad boy. Okay, there's a bolt right here that attaches this bracket. Looks like a 12 and it is a 12. So I'm gonna take that off. Be careful on the back side, it's got your ABS sensor going to it if you have ABS. Take that off and it's always a good idea to replace the bolt where you took it out. That's what it's supposed to do. I'm gonna figure out how to get this clip off. There you go. You kind of grab that lip of it. And wipe off with brake cleaner just to this guy, I'm gonna go in here. It is keyed, so it's kind of oval shaped, oblong shape, shape there, so it is keyed. We'll fit where it needs to. I think this unit, this can swivel around a little bit. It's on a little rubber grommet there. I think this doesn't get used anymore to hold anything, and I think this just gets bolted with the bolt going like that. So, I'm gonna take this bolt out, put it in there here, and line it up. It's got to be what it's supposed to be. And then this will go to the caliber once I get that bolted up. Wipe my hands down. Go get that rotor. You know, when you put it on there, you just want to make sure before you tie it all together that uh, 
it's not rubbing on the dust shield. I mean, it is a bigger rotor, so it's rubbing slightly on that dust shield, but you can bend the dust shield back a little bit and it's not gonna be a problem. Oh, that looks sweet. We'll leave everything a little loose and then torque it down once I get the stuff all figured out. So this is pretty much got a taper to the neck of it where it is pretty self-explanatory that it has to taper away from the brake caliper here. So you got your banjo bolt put in with your crush washer there, crush washer on the opposite side of things. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a snug. You know, the copper's a pretty soft metal, so that's why it's designed as a crush washer, just to give you a nice seal in there. I'm gonna come back through and probably torque all these down, or at least snug them all down to where I want them um, after the fact. So, knock on wood, this should be straight forward. Pop that out, get it threaded in, and just make sure you're not cross-threading this at all when you tighten it down. That's looking pretty good. That's pretty cool how much extra droop I'm gonna get out of this suspension uh, if I ever need it there, so. Uh, there you go. There is the braided brake line all the way down, curled around, going into the back of the caliper with the banjo bolt there. That's looking pretty sweet so far. I'm going to look up all the torque specs, torque everything down. So that's next. All right, let's just take a minute here and appreciate the difference of these two rotors. Quite a bit different. You're looking at probably a half of an inch wider, at least an inch taller, probably about an inch taller there. Just a huge upgrade, new versus old. Well, from what I found online, it looks like these back two bolts on the caliper are 90 foot pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque those to that. You know what? My torque wrench doesn't go up to 90, I'm just realizing. So so I'm gonna put it to 80 and then give it a couple of ooga -dugas. Throw a recommendation in the comment section to a torque wrench that goes like 80 to whatever. Again. You are doing this, so you gotta make these judgment calls for yourself as far as your level of comfort and safety. So, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm really good at misplacing tools while at work. I might go pro. So I am not exactly sure as to what angle I want this at. I mean, that seems fine. It's protected behind the caliper a little bit right there and kind of pointed up at a slight angle back. And same with this, I don't know. I mean, I probably don't want it like that because I don't think there's really much of a chance of it hitting any of that. I don't think it can flex that far by any means, but you wanna make sure your cable's not coming in contact with any hard edges or anything like that. But I think that's gonna be okay. We'll just run it like that and see. Good to go there, check my connections. I'm not seeing any new fluid up here, which is promising. I'll definitely wanna check that though when I go to flush the whole system. I'm gonna spray this whole thing down with brake cleaner eventually. Next, I just need to figure out how to install these brake pads. So this little pin comes out pretty easily and look how easily those move around because they're fresh. I'll go grab my brake pads. <laughs> Again, I bought all my stuff from R1 Concepts. Um, I was really happy with their service, with their products, all that kind of stuff. So tear into them. I don't know if they are labeled. God, it smells like, they smell like uh, Play-Doh or like power bait. I don't know if you're a fisherman. They smell like power bait like I remember, you know, from fishing when I was a kid. These brakes definitely have seen better days. One thing that's really nice to do is when you're doing a job like this, when there's a mated pair, you know, you're doing your brakes, it is nice to have the other brakes just sitting there so that if you have any questions about how things are supposed to go back together or what pieces go where on new components, you can look at the other side of the vehicle. I'm gonna go do that now. Took out the other brake pads on the other side and figured out that the clip goes at the bottom on the inside of the caliper edge. So, all right, well, I did a little research. I'm not sure if I'm finding an actual answer for this, but honestly, I think it makes the most sense to go like this so that these little wings rest on the top edge of this. So that's what makes the most sense. And all these are is to tension the brake pads away from this so it doesn't squeal as much when you're not utilizing the brake. So I didn't find an exact spec for this banjo bolt, but just enough to crush those washers a little bit. And I'm gonna go in and mark that with a paint pen. I'll probably mark everything with a paint pen before I throw the tires back on so that I can just check to make sure nothing's loosening up on me. All right, that side's done. I'm gonna go over to the other side and hopefully do that one quicker because I know how to do it.
right now I've got all my spacer bolts torqued down. I did watch some of my video footage and confirmed that I do have these torsion like anti-squeak springs put the right direction in there. So that's good. Next I move on to the back. I figure out if I'm gonna replace the uh, brake line back there with the braided brake line I have. I guess I don't know why I wouldn't. I bought it, so I might as well put it on. This guy right here is the one that this would be replacing. all over my camera I just know it there you go just extended the brake line a little bit and actually I was worried it was gonna droop down too close to the um, spinning drive shaft there but actually the natural kink in this thing kind of keeps it up out of the way and if my suspension ever droops out you know far enough down then I have less of a risk of blowing a brake line so I'm going to rinse that off a little bit with some brake cleaner and I will probably mark everything with a white pen so I know if it is uh, loosening up on me but yeah that pretty much does it right there I uh, I'm ready to start bleeding the lines so I'm going to straighten up a tiny bit and I'm gonna show you guys how to use a vacuum bleeder while I learn how to use a vacuum bleeder. Okay, well, I'm gonna decide to break this thing up into two different videos. It's just too much content to put in one video. You saw today the process of taking off the old rotors and calipers. They were just worn out, destroyed, and then putting on the new upgraded Lexus GX460 uh, larger rotors and calipers and brake pads and all that kind of stuff. Also, we did the swap out on the original OEM flexible brake lines for the new braided stainless steel brake lines in the front. Next video, we're Going to go through the process and i'm going to do it for the first time of using a vacuum brake bleeder system so i'm excited to try this out it would really change things not having to have somebody sit there and pump a brake pedal a hundred times and we're also going to go through the process of how to break in your rotors when you're putting your rig back on the road after doing a brake job like this thank you for watching the video if you like the video please consider hitting the like button below to let me know i've done a good job you can mash the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified when i put out a new video each week if you have any questions or comments definitely throw them down in the comment section below i will link everything i used in this video in the description section of this video so you can click the links over to Amazon or R1 Concepts or wherever you want to. to. You can follow me over on Instagram at Evergreen Overland as well as evergreenoverland.com. Have a good day.